November 1986 rolls around and they want the budget request. So let's take a look at this budget here. We are way over. Deficit limit is insane. Look at them. Nobody wants any cuts. They all want the raises. What should I do, folks? Friends? Comrades? I think for now I'm just going to approve the same budget. This year will be the same as the last year. No increases, no decreases. You'll find a way to make this budget work. The long, hard Soviet winter is about to bring in the new year. 1987 comes in with a fresh coating of snow, blanketing everything. Major research accident. Nuclear fueled rocket accident at Kapustin Yar Cosmodome. The, can the contamination now under control, but hundreds of scientists and technicians have been lost or injured. Nikita Turnyak. Damn it. That was one of our finest research stations that housed some of the most brilliant minds we still have left. I only hope that Professor Kruglov is still alive. Experimental gene altered seed has brought us a 20% increase in crop production. However, we cannot permit use in the future as there is much destruction of soil nutrients. Not bad. Congratulations, country. We will all eat well this year. Hey, what are you doing, Poland? It's either red or pink. Yellow is not an option. As Mayday approaches, your assistants make preparations for the annual policies that have not changed in the last several years. Let's check economic policies. No, leave that. Trade policy. Bump this up to seven. We'll have a little bit more open trading. And an urgent phone call from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Comrade President, the so-called Solidarity Movement in Poland is gaining strength and challenging the legal basis of the communist regime we favor. They could set a dangerous Eastern Bloc precedent by establishing free elections in their country. Should we intervene? If we do, to what extent should we get involved? Should we send troops, money? Should we be content issuing press statements? What should we do? Hmm, should we send Warsaw Pact troops into Poland? Prop up the government with more money that we don't have? Issue worthless documents condemning it that will do nothing? We're going to send Warsaw Pact troops to keep Poland from leaving this country. The motherland will not, will not hemorrhage them today. Citing the need to preserve order in an allied country, the president sent Warsaw Pact troops to keep the peace and strife torn Poland. We will pay any price, fight any battles to save our allies, the president said. That's right. Pink or red, that's it. Phone 4 rings again. Comrade President, the policy was proposed at the Warsaw Pact meeting this morning that no member nation has the moral right to interfere in the internal affairs of any other member nation. This would certainly lead to our allies feeling much more independent of our control. Do you want me to agree to this policy, reject it, or reserve comment on it? We're going to completely reject this policy. It is completely asinine and detrimental to everything we've worked for. Denouncing the recent Warsaw Pact proposal as a subversive strategy meant to divide the alliance, the President said the Soviet Union stood ready to help its partners whenever they were troubled by internal dissension. We will not let ourselves be turn, torn apart by the dogs who would hide inside us and bite us like fleas. What do you do in Hungary? The gangrene network opens its mouth again. The president today, amidst a growing crisis, agreed to send Warsaw Pact troops into Poland. May 1987, and someone from the KGB wishes to speak to us. What do you need, my military comrades? President, the Baltic Republics of Lativa, Estonia, 
and Lithuania declared that since they were not voluntarily annexed into the Union during World War II, they are now free and independent of the Union. We are prepared to send troops and impose martial law if you order us, or should we just declare sanctions? Declare martial law to impose order, use troops to enforce economic sanctions that will only punish the free and innocent people of those countries who are doing nothing, negotiate a settlement giving the Baltic Republics more political independence that they will more than likely throw back in our face and not take seriously. They'll use it to stall time until they can find a way to wiggle out of our grasp. No, we'll declare martial law while we still can and not let them fly into the night. Even the declaration even the declaration or martial law in the presence of Soviet troops could not break the spirit of the Baltic people. No, but starvation and hunger would. And that's exactly what will happen. The president declared martial law in the Baltics yesterday and imposed a strict curfew on Baltic residents. Looks like we're having some dissent up here in Lithuania, too. Lithuania, Lativa, that's all them, then. We got hungry all now. Poland's decided that they want to try to split. It's June, July, and the Telex goes again. Policy change is announced. Comrade the President, your words have touched the hearts of the Soviet people, but I must admit that I have trouble accepting your political stance in the area of trade. Reconsider this policy or the nation may face dire consequences. We must release the pressure somewhere on the system. If we're not going to grant civil rights or more personal freedoms, we must open the markets just a little bit. We have an urgent phone call. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs again, no doubt those other countries. Comrade the President, our Warsaw Pact countries, our Warsaw Pact allies are renouncing their allegiances to the treaty, and in many cases resorting to free elections and even ousting communist governments. What should we do? It's almost too much. Send in troops to protect our allies' communist governments, use strong economic sanctions. We're going to send in our troops, damn it. We've got troops stationed in all those countries. We've all been training for this. We'd expected that the, uh, the capitalist pigs on the other side of the world would be able to influence this one day. Even the use of force could not prevent the Warsaw Pact nations from seceding, as local citizens fought successfully against Soviet tanks. We just didn't have enough troops or tanks to cover so vast an area. Damn it. We've lost so much. And there's probably more to be lost. Soviet troops and artillery rolled into the capitals of our military allies amidst rumors of unrest in the Eastern Bloc. Looks like Romania and Bulgaria are getting, getting ideas now. Belarusia, the UK, you have an urgent call from the Council of Ministers. Comrade President, a no-confidence motion has been brought against you in the Politburo. The vote will be taken this afternoon. As my staff and I see it, you have these options. Bargain with the opposition and see if you can offer them enough to call off the vote. Stand your ground. It's the same thing you put up last time. I'm not sure if we have enough funds. Call in political favors. You think we've bribed enough people over the years with our money? We haven't been in office too long, so there's no telling how much loyalty they'll have to us. The people certainly won't give a damn about us. They see us as despots, unable to see the true grasp of our vision. Brazen it out and call for an immediate shutdown vote in the Politburo? Hmm. I'm gonna call in political favors in the hopes that hopes that we've been managing we've been able to secure some of them over the years. After fierce political infighting within the Politburo, the President rallied supporters to defeat the no-confidence motion. Oh, thank gosh. And to remain in office, opponents vowed, however, that the matter would not end here. Of course not. The fiends, they'll press on us forever. Claiming they were merely completing the revolution begun by Alexander Dubsek back in 1968, the liberal leaders in Czechoslovakia broke their Warsaw Pact ties and indicated they want to travel a more capitalistic road.
Estonia, the northernmost of the three Baltic republics, today officially declared a secession from the Soviet Union and a restoration of the independence it held between the two world wars. The Soviet Navy will sorely miss the use of Tallinn. Yes, we will. I think it was right there. We'll have to go out through here or all the way around there now. Oh well. After years of agitation from Solidarity and other nationalist labor groups, Poland has split itself off and declared itself free from Soviet domination. We've been unable to hold on to that one, Mr. President. Citing dissatisfaction with Soviet domination dating all the way back to 1956 uprising, Hungary has chosen to divorce itself from our, our fine land. Anyone else? The door's still open. Romania? Do you have any second thoughts here?